Hello all, uh, I am Narain from School of Chemical and Biotechnology Shastra. This is a learning capsule as part of the fluid mechanics for process engineers course that I take for uh, chemical and biotech students at Shastra. This is the learning capsule 1.2 of the module 1 and uh, we are continuing with uh, what is fluid. Uh, the discussion that we started in learning capsule one now the suggested uh, readings are you can go through the book of munson and fox uh, for a deeper understanding of the concept in this learning module now what we saw in uh, in the learning capsule one that it is that the fluid is something defined like as the one that continuously deforms and it deforms i would say here due to the action of due to the action of an infant assembly uh, a small shear stress that is acting on fluid now we need to understand this further so let's take an example and then try to build on that let's say that suppose if you have a pile of cotton suppose let's assume that you have a cotton a small amount we have taken right if you apply a force let's say like this and try to press this cotton so suppose you just have your uh, take a cotton in your hand and then try to push it what you would expect so we expect this cotton to shrink right so that means you expect this cotton to come closely packed and then become smaller in the size so so that means this is a response okay so this is certainly a response now the question is uh, is this response helps to classify cotton as a fluid right think on this observation can can this force acting and uh, the cotton as a material uh, responding be classified as a fluid to classify this as a fluid we need to show that it should continuously uh, deform now certainly this is continuous right so as long as you press uh, as long as you apply here a force right on this area let's say which is the boundary of the cotton you can see that uh, the, the cotton deforms so probably this is okay this is satisfied now what about is this a shearing stress is this force a shearing stress is this force uh, per unit area which we call it as stress is this stress a shearing stress now if you think deeper and go back to your fundamental uh, physics this is not a shearing stress this does not means a shearing stress so that that means by this definition of uh, infinitesimal shear stress uh, acting on a matter and then continuously deforming if you use this definition then certainly this cannot be classified as a fluid so that means this is not a fluid let's take an another example now in this case uh, let us take that uh, we have a pile of paper so that means uh, let's say this is a bundle of paper sheet so you have a, a paper stacked like this so you have uh, sheets of paper let's say that you have a4 sheets that you use to write or stacked now let's apply that you just uh, keep your palm here and then slide this top paper so this is assuming that this is on the floor so this is on the floor or this is on a table rather and you are just keeping uh, your your palm and just pressing it uh, the paper so that you are just moving this paper the top paper what do you expect right certainly the paper moves okay the paper moves right or rather probably the top two or three sheets might be moving is it clear 
so you see a response so you see a response this is a force uh, acting so force acting on this area is uh, the stress now you can see that there is a stress acting and there is a response now again ask the same question the first question is is this tau a shear stress can this be a shear stress and the question two is there a continuous uh, uh, deformation in that material in that material if these two are yes then certainly this will become a fluid so that means a pile of paper will then become a fluid but are they really yes right this is just think or this is certainly s yes. it is certainly a shear stress because this is shearing the paper so that means i'm not explaining here what is a shear stress but i have said in this case it is not a shear stress whereas in this case it's a shear stress so if you carefully observe the direction of force in this example of a pile of cotton versus the next example where i have kept a pile of paper a four sheets stacked and i'm saying here this is a shear stress so from this i want you to do an activity and then understand what is this shear stress actually means what is the direction uh, how do you classify a stress as shear stress so this is certainly satisfied there is a continuous deformation in the material is this satisfied probably the the first sheet moves as you say that this first paper will move the second paper will move then afterwards do you think will there be any movement it won't right probably it is it won't and if it is there are new uh, newly bought a4 sheets right uh, from the cover probably with a small push given by a hand not even the first paper moves so this continuous deformation is something not satisfied and hence this pile of paper is not termed as a fluid it is termed as a solid now you can think of example of a fluid itself now let's take that i have a glass right i have a glass which is filled with fluid so let us assume this is a, a stainless steel glass which is filled this with, with fluid and let us assume that i just keep a lid which just covers this right and i am pressing here do you expect a deformation so this is a force on a, a glass a glass which is filled half with a water i am keeping a lid and pressing it with a force right now you certainly call this as liquid right so this is certainly a liquid of water so that means this is certainly a fluid as per your definition but then uh, do you see a deformation right do you see a shear stress in this case right in this this is something an activity just i want you to do it debate maybe we can discuss during the class interaction that one of this or probably both of this is not satisfied and that is why though this is not satisfied this definition does not hold this this experiment is not an appropriate experiment so this is not an appropriate uh, experiment to identify the material as fluid right this is in fact uh, adapted from this example of a cotton here the experiment does not conforms to the words of shear stress only when you apply shear stress 
and then if you have to see a deformation and only then a matter uh, can be classified as a, a fluid material so that means you need to have a matter on this you need to apply a shear stress so that means you need to apply a shearing force and and you need to see a deformation this deformation has to be continuous and this continuous deformation you should be able to see even for a small shear stress only when all these three components are there in an experiment you will be able to identify that the one that deforms continuously is called a fluid and the one that does not deforms continuously is called probably solid so in this case this again does not satisfy the shear stress there is no shear stress in this case and that is why this experiment is not appropriate to identify even though the material the matter the mass inside the system is a fluid if you do this experiment and suit to this definition you will probably not identify it correctly as a fluid so i'll end this learning uh, short learning capsule here and leave it to you to find out other examples of how to identify how to subject a material to a shear stress and identify that there is a continuous deformation in a fluid thank you